Welcome to AM Muscle Maintenance with In Shape Fitness. I am Coach Kim, and today's podcast is a workout, and it's called Chamber Fitness, named aptly for fitness that you can do in the chamber, in your bedroom or your living room, somewhere in private. Doesn't require that you put on fancy gym clothes and go out of your home. It doesn't even require that you wear shoes on your feet. Of course, no equipment is going to be used just body weight exercises in a fairly straightforward way, but hopefully with a couple of tips added in and some fun in the uh, in the privacy of your own home. I named it Chamber Fitness uh, for a 91-year-old private client that I have in New York City, and most of the exercises that we do are in his bedroom. Uh, it's a fairly large bedroom, but it is... Uh, it is something that I've I've been working with him for like nine years now. So we uh, we joke about um, the uh, the term, but I, and I normally call it maintenance routines. Uh, as I actually spoke on the last In Shape Fitness Show podcast, which was a description of categorizing uh, the different categories of workouts because every workout doesn't have to be an hour. Every workout doesn't have to be 45 minutes. Um, Sometimes I do five minute workouts. I just did one actually before I got started. Uh, The morning routines that I do, um, sort of the five functional five exercise routines that I do. This one is a little bit longer at 20 minutes. We're going to start with a postural systems check like we do with most of our exercise routines. So stand up for me if you're not already standing and make sure that your feet are straight. So your feet are parallel. Turning your toes out, not good. You want your feet to be parallel and you want to think about how you are making contact with your floor. That's why you don't wear shoes. You want to think about the splay of your toes a little bit, the use of the ball of your feet distributing evenly between the front of your foot, uh, the toes and the ball of the foot with the heel. You want to make sure that your left foot and your right foot are equally distributing your body weight. And that is unusual. If you take a look around, I watch people. I'm like a fitness anthropologist. I watch people and the way they move all the time in all of my travels. And there are a lot of them. In fact, I'm not in New York right now. I'm down in Virginia. I've been watching, doing the tourist thing for the, the last couple of weeks. And I observe the bizarre way that people stand when they stand still. So when you're standing still now in your postural systems systems check, you're elongating through your spine, your shoulders are back, you're taking a couple of deep breaths, thinking about the pull in of your belly button towards your spine and the tuck in of your tailbone. So the, the seated uh, position that we find ourselves spending most of our time in as a, uh, as a, as a society is damaging in many ways. But one of the main structural things that happens is a deviation from your proper posture related to the pelvis and the tilt of it. As you sit, your pelvis has a tendency to tilt forward and that pushes your butt out a little bit. What you want to have is a pelvis that is is literally um, sort of running straight up and down. But the reason for that is because You don't want extra strain on your lower back when you stick your butt out, when your pelvis is tilted. You you contract the muscles, not by knowing this, but but inadvertently, you'd contract the lower back muscles. And that's a contraction that isn't needed. And then you pull on your hip flexors and do a lot of interesting other things related to your center of gravity. So tuck in your tailbone zip up your tummy muscles. And then back to those feet for one second. Just think about this and take this throughout the rest of your day. It is really important that you distribute your body weight as evenly as possible between your two legs, unless you are exercising one leg and then the other in an independent you know, sort of exercise component, uh, we call it pivoting, where you focus on the strength of one leg as a result of the imbalances that you naturally have. Because most right-handed people are right dominant, uh, most left-handed people have lots of other issues. Um, I say that freely because I'm a left-handed person, and uh, those of us that are left-handed know that we have a lot of transference issues, and so there's not the right leg doing all of the work with the left leg trying to keep up as much as it is um, sort of the going back and forth depending on how you learn how to do things when you were a kid. So 
Let's now begin on the floor. That was five minutes of an introduction, five minutes of deep breathing. Hopefully you're breathing now deeply in through your nose. Exhale, bellowing out the air through your mouth. So inhale, smell the air around you and bellow the air, the carbon dioxide out through your mouth. Down on your knees, we're going to start on the floor. And I want to start with just a couple of cat camels. And that is a really simple position, a simple flexibility move that we build into virtually all of our exercise routines uh, and we'll do it several times uh, in the course of this first segment of exercises on the floor. So you're going to be in cat camel which is called quadruped starting position where your hands and your knees are on the floor. You want to be very acutely aware of the position of your hands. Your wrists should make a straight vertical line with your shoulders and then when you press into the floor, don't mash the heel of your hand into the floor. You want to distribute your body weight uh, through the fingertips and the top part of your palm. Then the knees and your hips should also make a straight line. Okay, now the cat and the camel are really simple. With the cat, it's a scared cat. So you let your head drop like a bowling ball and you curve up your spine as though you're trying to reach, you, you want to be a scared cat. You want that curl, the curvature of your spine, your upper and middle back lifts up high, that elongates the space in between each of the vertebra, gives that extra suppleness to the soft tissues that exist between each of those vertebra, the discs, so that you have full range of motion and most people don't have full range of motion once they get past their sort of growing period. And this is starting earlier and earlier and earlier with people because of our sedentary lives. But after you stop growing, your spine needs to have flexibility work built in, in order to maintain full range of motion, which is the key, one of the keys to um, to a functional, uh, sustainable, functional health. Then you take a deep breath in your scared cat, and then you invert your body in the opposite way by lifting your head in your chest and then contracting your lower back a little bit for the camel, if you will. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know that you would look like a camel. You probably don't. I don't ever feel like I do, but nonetheless, you hold here, take another deep breath, go back to the camel or to the scared cat one more time. Let's do two of these. We'll again, we'll do them again in just a minute. We're going to do something harder in just a second here. And, uh, and then back to the, the, so back to the scared cat and then back to the camel with a full breath cycle for each. Okay. Now flatten your back out because the next thing that we're going to do is a small muscle exercise called the bird dog which requires that your back it be a straight, flat surface. And the only thing that you do, again, this is a real low level in terms of difficulty level effort for most people, though doing it correctly is more complicated than it seems like it should be. So with the bird dog exercise, all that you do is Take a deep breath and as you are blowing air out through your mouth, slowly extend your right arm forward and your left leg back. So you're making a diagonal line from the right fingertips to the left tips of the toes. Point the toes. Extend the fingers. Your, your palm should face your head and you make that straight line. Pause at the extension. You go slowly here. Moving fast is easier, believe it or not. You want to move with complete control, deliberate extension, and then return back to the starting position with your right arm tucked back underneath, your, your right wrist tucked back underneath your right shoulder, your left knee tucked underneath your left hip. And then the opposite combination is executed. So then the left hand extends straight out, left hand touch or um, uh, points, the palm points towards the head, your left fingertips and your right toes are trying to get as much, make as long of a diagonal line as they can. 
and then you return back to your starting position. Do one more of each of these combinations. So right arm, left leg, and then the left arm and right leg. Now, I want you to lower your body down to your elbows and walk out your feet so that you're resting on the balls of your feet and your toes for a plank. Usual suspects here. We're gonna repeat a couple of exercises. So you're just gonna be in plank for about 20 seconds. You're 10 seconds in, believe it or not. Make sure that your butt is down. This should be hard. The reason plank is difficult is because there is a flip of a switch and five, mi five layers of muscle isometrically contract at the same time as a unit and now you can sit in child's pose. In child's pose is where you bend your knees, you put your butt on your heels, you drape your torso over your thighs and you extend your walk your fingers as far away from your body. Your elbows are not touching the floor here so that you can stretch out your back. Take a deep breath. In fact, take five deep breaths in child's pose and then we're going back to the bird dog. We're going to make it a little bit harder. My 91 year old client, by the way, if you are still in child's pose before you're going back to quadruped, my 91 year old client refuses to call child's pose, child's pose. We actually call it the hedgehog and I have to give him credit. I think he's much more uh, on point with some of the names of, of exercises, but we, we want to make sure you know what you're doing here. So we'll call it child's pose for today. Okay. So you're going back to quadruped. We're going to go back to bird dog only this time. Instead of switching back and forth, we're going to do an upside down uh, sort of a crunch underneath the body. So back to your quadruped, your hands and your, uh, your wrists and your shoulders, your knees and your hips, right? Straight lines. Now extend the right arm and the left leg back, right arm out, left leg back again, and pause here again. So what you're going to do, and you're just going to do seven of these, you're going to bring the right elbow in and under your body to the diagonal with the left knee coming to meet it. So right elbow, left knee underneath the body. The back has to curl a little bit for this to happen and then stretch back out for a count of seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so you squeeze and then stretch and then squeeze and then stretch. Now let's make sure that the body position is correct again. Your right shoulder and your right wrist, your left knee and your left hip, straight lines. Extend the other combination, left arm, right leg. You can do this, continue to breathe. Make sure you exhale as you do the squeeze part. You inhale as you extend back out. All right, so account, account for seven, left elbow, to the right knee underneath the body with a little bit of a back curl in order to make the space for them. Go ahead and get started. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then a plank again. Back to your elbows. We're gonna go for another 20 seconds in your standard plank. If this is too easy for you, you know what you to do. People that do planks fairly frequently have a really good sense of the versions of plank that make it a little more complicated, whether it's a little bit of a twist of your, your hips or a uh, lift of your, your hips into a dip, um, be ball, belly busters is what we call them, uh, or in, you know any of the number of combinations. You can do leg uh, lateral leg taps or what have you. Um, but you are about 15 seconds in. So just make sure that your butt is down and that you feel all of those layers of muscle contracting isometrically, which is the sublime perfection, uh, if you do it correctly, of the plank. All right, go ahead and rest in child's pose again. I want to turn you over and do a couple of exercises on your back before we stand up and finish up on our feet. I know a lot of a lot of trainers prefer uh, starting on the feet and ending on the on the floor. 
um, in my experience, it is best to juice up the core, do the core work on the floor first, and then you have a much more productive session when you get to some sort of amplified activity. I, I, I will refrain from call it, calling it cardio because we do some, um, some balance exercises, but they also uh, elevate your heart rate and some different things. So uh, the, uh, the next thing I want you to do after you have taken your deep breaths in child's pose is to turn over and to tuck your hands up underneath your butt a little bit if you need the support for your lower back and lift up your feet. Your knees are gonna be bent 90 degree angles. If you can go back to geometry, and this is one of the reasons why with my my elementary school kid, I am very, very keen on making sure she knows and knows and knows, masters the concepts of geometry so well because understanding what a right angle is is a really important thing when it gets to adulthood. Um, especially with, with the geometry, the positions that you start in, 90 degree angle at your hips. So your knees, your thighs, and your torso make a 90 degree angle. Your knees are in the air. And then your feet also need to make a 90 degree angle. Your, your knee joint is that 90 degree angle as well. The other last thing I want to say is that your hips and your knees and your ankles should be in a straight line. Don't let your, your knees shouldn't be too close together. Your knees shouldn't be too far apart. They should be in the natural position with hip width space in between your two limbs. Okay, so you're holding this position and I want you to just think about how it feels to be in this position. I call it astronaut's launch and it is a position that activates the lower tummy muscles a little bit. And now what you're going to do is a simple exercise that isolates your right leg versus your left leg. So your left leg is going to stay isolated, hanging out where it is, not moving. Don't let it move. The right foot, however, is going to lower down and touch the floor and then lift back up, keeping the knee angle 90 degrees the whole time. We call these toe taps. My 91-year-old client calls them Fred Astaire. So be that, you know, take that if you, if it's helpful as the description. Um, but your hip joint is the only thing that's moving. So you just tap the floor and just do as many as you want for the next uh, another 10 seconds. Okay. So again, controlled, deliberate movement is better than fast, super fast movement, unless otherwise noted, which we will get to a little bit later. But last three seconds, two, one, now switch position your right leg back to that starting position with the right knee in the air, the right foot isolated at right and with, with right angles, 90 degree angles in both joints, the hip joint and the knee joint. And now the left foot is going to do the same thing. And what you should be feeling for the next five, but the next uh, 12 seconds or so, uh, as you tap the left foot down and then lift back up, you feel your hip flexors moving and you feel your thigh muscles having to move. You might also feel the contraction of your lower tummy muscles. So go ahead and rest for a second with both feet on the floor because now what I want you to do, I want your feet flat on the floor, again, parallel to one another, don't turn your toes out. And I want your heels fairly close to your butt when you put your feet down because the next thing is a hip bridge. So when you get ready, lift your body up into a hip bridge and stay there. Savor the movement. Put your hands on the floor beside your body, palms down. And then just think about keeping your feet flat. Don't let your toes lift up, lift, lift up off of the floor. That was a mouthful of words. For some reason, I was having a hard time with that. Okay, so the inclination for a lot of people is to lift up the toes. And the reason you don't want to do that is because when your feet are flat on the floor, you encourage the back of the leg to take part in the exercise. When your toes are up, the only parts of the body are the front, the thighs, and your, your, uh, your lower back actually does a little more work. But your thighs are predominantly um, taking on the load. What With a flat foot, you force your hamstrings and your butt to help out. 
All right, that's a good thing. We want the back of the body to do its work. Now, lower down and lift up. Really simple hip bridge dips. Slow, inhale down, exhale up. Excellent. All right, couple more seconds, five seconds here. Doesn't again, a lot of the time I just do uh, segments of time. If you're moving slowly and you're moving deliberately, the number of repetitions matters a lot less. Okay, so we're just going to do these two exercises as a pair here together before I have you do a couple more exercises on the floor related to your core. You won't hate them. I promise they're not super, super hard, but I do want to make sure that we uh, activate the side of your body. And I do want to make sure that we do a little bit more flexibility work before we stand up. So your toe taps, again, Fred Astaire, back to that. So go ahead and lift up your feet. Do the systems check again. And everyone has to do this. I do it when I'm exercising. Take a moment before you start moving. It is better to breathe deeply and to be deliberate in your movement to do it correctly than to proceed through repetitions without without the systems check because if you're doing it wrong you're probably not engaging the body in the correct way the best way and therefore you're not benefiting from it to the maximum degree so your toe taps are now left foot stays still right foot is moving touching the floor lifting back up all right let's just do a, like 10 seconds worth of these we're going to do 10 seconds with the left leg and then we're going to do a little bit of an alternating pattern as well I do love that we name this Fred Astaire when I uh, when I do some exercises with my when I do the exercises with my 91 year old client. Um, it's a, it's a lot of fun. We get to this and we he has a, a sort of a, a similar exercise that we call Ginger Rogers. Um, we're not doing that today, but anyway. So now from the toe taps, uh, individual toe taps on one side to do an, an alternating version. You can go a little bit faster here if you're doing the alternating version. And again, what you're feeling, first of all, because your your hip flexors are the primary movers in this exercise, you have to contract your activated through your lower core because that is stabilizing your pelvis and helping the hip flexors do that work. So it's really important. It's one of the main reasons why you want to be in the right position, why you want to move with deliberate um, sort of awareness and why you want to take your time, especially in the beginning as you're learning an exercise. This is a, sort of a teaching um, session, if you will, as all of the podcast workouts are. You can do them over and over again. I will post the sequence of moves to the bodybyinshape.com blog and therefore you can write them down or you can print them out or whatever and then you can go and do you know different segments add things in if you want do whatever you want with this this free level of programming but learn from it learn how to do all the moves properly and you're going to benefit a great deal so now the hip bridge again is where your feet are flat on the floor. Make sure that you do not turn your toes out. I sound like a broken record. Uh, then you lift up your hips into the air and then you lower down and lift up. And again, another like 20 seconds of this exercise. We're gonna do a couple of side exercises and then we're gonna get up off the floor and, uh, and move the body with a little more, uh, you know, a little more ferocity. All right, hip bridges, inhale on your way down, exhale as you lift back up. Make sure you keep those feet are flat. You do not want to turn your toes out. And keep moving. Last three seconds. Two, one, great. Now, do me a favor. Bring your knees into your chest and give your knees a big hug. All right, so you're, it's, it's sort of a, an upside down child's pose. You get a bit of a stretch through your back, but this is just the first step in a, in a really important st stretch of the side of your body that I want to make sure that you do. And this is something that you should try to do at least a couple times a week. 
if not every day. I try to encourage people that I work with on a regular basis to end every day with a stretch session. Again, I'm not into the fancy name. So, you know, there might be people that tell you, hey, sign up for that yoga class. You got to do it two times a week if you want to run a marathon, whatever. I don't believe in any of that stuff. What I think you need to do is maintain range of motion through all of your joints that requires flexibility work and everyday stretching on your floor in your bedroom before bed or on your bed is beneficial. So now you take your knees and you drop them down to one side of the body. You keep your shoulders flat because the rotation of your torso and the pull on your IT band. So if your, your legs have been shifted to the right side of your body, your left leg is on top. And if you keep your knees stacked, don't move your knees, but straighten the left leg. So the lower leg just straightens out. Then you should feel the tension. If you're a sedentary person, for sure, you're going to feel the tension of your IT band. If it's too hard to straighten out completely, don't do it. But you should be able to straighten your left leg out completely and keep your right shoulder down, your left shoulder down. And you'll feel that really, really enormous release of tension that you probably have. You might need to breathe into it a little bit. Okay, now you're going to do the other side. So now we're going to bend the, the left knee again, lift the body back up, drop both knees down to the left. Pause here for a second. Make sure that the right shoulder stays down. The left shoulder is flat, of course. And then when you're ready, once you're here, you've taken a breath, straighten the right leg out. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now I want to, I want to get you up because I said that the workout itself was going to be about 20 minutes. We're a little over that now, but of course we took that five minute intro. So I want to make sure that you stand up. And I want to make sure that you are moving pretty quick, get your heart rate up, and then do a couple of balance exercises. The very first thing that we're going to do is jumping jacks, all right? Jumping jacks are one of my favorite exercises, and I do them every single morning with my routine. So we're going to do 30 seconds of jumping jacks. Go ahead and get started. Now with jumping jacks, make sure that you are lifting your arms way up over your head touching your toes, uh, touching your fingertips up at the, up at the top. They should meet. They don't need to clap like when you were a little kid, but your elbows need a little bit of a bend probably, but they shouldn't be completely bent. You want to feel the stretch on the sides of your bodies, uh, sides of your body. And then when you extend your feet out, as you're jumping your feet out, you land lightly on the balls of your feet. Yes. Can you do this in bare feet? Absolutely. You can do this in bare feet. Your 30 seconds is down to three, two, and one. Now, a simple squat. Don't Let's not stop. We're going to plant the feet shoulder width apart. You're going to sit down and back into an imaginary chair. Or if you need an actual chair, that's fine too. But sit down, sit back as you stand up. You want to contract your glute muscles. You need to use your butt as you lift up straight up. You lift your body, extending your hip flexors, And then go right back into another squat. You inhale on the way down. You exhale as you lift back up. I'm going to count you down here from 20 seconds. Last 10. Excellent. Last one. Okay. Now what I want you to do is a balance exercise I call the forward reach. And it is a hard one. It's going to sustain that level of of elevated heart rate that you probably still have. You're going to isolate your right leg and lift your left, extend your left leg back. Now, put your right hand on your right hip, your left hand, extend it forward. And as you are extending your left leg back, your left, your torso is going to turn down towards the floor Don't curl your back. You want to keep a flat back. So you're just hinging at your hips, your waist. And then try to extend your left fingertips, not necessarily to touch the floor, 
but maybe to reach towards the middle part of your shin. And if you can get lower than that, that's great. So maybe to the left side of your, uh, of your, uh, to the left toes, anywhere down. If you can reach the, the floor with your left fingertips, that's great. Then as you lift back up, you squeeze the left glute. That is the primary mover to right yourself into the standing position again. And you want to go slowly. Try one more. Okay. So that's two on each side. Now we're going to isolate the left leg. If you are right-handed, this is going to be harder. Very important takeaway from all of my podcasts, but for sure in this particular exercise, uh, your if you're left-handed, you don't have this issue. You might have different balance issues, but right-handed people have a much weaker left leg, which means the left glute is weak, which means balancing on your left leg is hard, but lifting the body with your left butt cheek is really difficult. So make sure that you keep your tummy muscles engaged. Make sure that you think about your left butt cheek as you lift your body back up. All right, we're going to finish with a little bit of a squat with a hop, some squat jumps, all right, to finish you off. If you're not interested in doing the jump part, just do just do one more round of, of squats. We're going to do the last 20 seconds. Sit down and then stand up and jump. All right, sit down and then stand up and jump. Your time is going. Last exercise, and then I'm going to let you go. We did actually go quite over the time, um, but uh, but I wanted to make sure that you get it correctly. So when you distill out all of the extra commentary, all of the editorializing about the different muscles that are in use, about the position of your body, the um, the, the the added stuff about my 91 year old client. It will, when you print it out and you are mastering these exercises, you are going to be able to do this sequence in 20 minutes. I promise you, you're all set. Have a great day. I will see you again next week for another new podcast workout.